Hello everyone. Welcome to my series on A2019 or Automation 360 Programming. And today we are going to discuss how to invoke DLL functions from Automation 360. So let's jump to Visual Studio first. So over here we have a very basic uh, class construct. We have a name namespace. Uh, the namespace is NSDLL test. We have a class called class1. And inside the class1 we have two methods and two variables. The first variable is a string array of size 3. And the second variable is a dictionary variable of key type string and value type string. Now in the first method, which is return string array, we are going to accept three string variables in this method. And we are going to input those string variables inside the string array strarr. And once done, we are going to return the string array back to the calling method. In the second function, we are going to do a return dictionary. So in this case, we are going to accept two string arrays. One array will contain all the key names and the other array will contain all the values. And we are going to loop through both the arrays and then create a dictionary with the key and the value pair and return the entire dictionary back to the calling function. Now, let's jump to our A2019 code. So the first thing we need to do here is to upload the DLL which I have already done over here. So we have used this upload files option to browse and upload the compare data types DLL from our file system. And now in our code we are going to open the DLL package. So in the DLL package we are going to go with the open function first. And we are going to go with control room file, click on choose browse, navigate to the folder and select the DLL and then click on choose. Now that we have selected our DLL, the next is the run function. In the run function we have an option for getting the DLL details. So we click on get DLL details and let's try the control room file first. So we click on choose and we browse to the same folder select the DLL and click on choose and then we click on next and this throws an internal error now I have seen that error multiple times but I just wanted to show you the error because it, you might be facing the same error on your end so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on desktop file and browse the DLL from my file system now you might ask if we have already opened the DLL over here, why do we need to browse the DLL again? So this is a question that even I had, but I guess uh, as long as the DLL format is same, uh, it's just taking care of the mapping of the variables to the right function. Okay, so let's browse the DLL from our file system. Okay, so now we have chosen our DLL. The next screen shows us the namespace name, which is NSDLL test. We click on this. And now it will fetch the class name. Now the class name is showing here, class 1. We click on this. And the next module will show us the method names inside that class. So we have our return string array, which takes string parameters and returns a string array. We have return dictionary, which takes string arrays and returns a dictionary. So let's start with the string array. Click on apply. And now here we can map the parameters. So if you see, the namespace, the class name and the method name are already populated. What we need to do here is to populate the values for these parameters inside the DLL. So just double click on this row and now you can place a variable. So the parameter for the DLL is str1 and we are going to go with the insecure string and just put the value test1. And the moment I type test1, test1 is getting typed over here. So I can directly close this, double click on the next row insecure string test 2 close this double click click here test 3 close now the output of this as we remember is a string array the method name itself is return string array right so the output is a string array and the best way to store a string array in A2019 is to use a list variable so it's just a collection of string so I'm going to use a list variable of subtype string and name it, let's say, LST values. Create and select. 
Now the DLL part is over so I can close the DLL using the close command and now I need to see what is populated in the list to do that I can just put a message box over here and I can select the list and put dot and select the list to string shortcut let's run this and see and we see that uh, all the values in the list is displayed over here comma separated that's what the shortcut does now all the values are populated right here test 1 test 2 and test 3 so we passed three string values and we returned a string array to a list variable in the a2019 code now let's try the other function uh, let's click on get DRL details again and we have selected the DRL click on next So just like before it shows the namespace we click on that and it retrieves the class name click on the class name it retrieves the method names and we click on return dictionary and click on apply so now in the variable mapping you see we are expecting string arrays so we double click on this and since it's a string array it's giving the option of a list click on list and now this list is for key names so our first key name is employee name and our second key name is employee designation close this and you see that it's populated as a list of two elements now our second parameter is is a list of values so for every key name that you have entered we have to enter corresponding values so for employee name we can enter John and for employee designation we can enter CEO close now this method is supposed to output a dictionary value so instead of a list we create a dictionary of subtype string and name it DICT result create and select we close the DLL as usual and in the message box we remove this and we put DICT result dot to string and let's run the code and see And we see that we have a dictionary output where the key name and the value pairs are being displayed. Now this format is the outcome of this uh, uh, two string shortcut. But you can also loop through the keys and loop through the values in dictionary. Now employee name says John and employee designation is CEO. Perfect. So this is how you can invoke DLL methods from A2019. You can pass parameters of different data types and you can also accept output return values from the DLL of different data types. Just try it out on your own and let me know if you face any issues. I'll be happy to help you out in the comment section or post a video for you. Thank you.